Uh, hi, <clears throat> I'm Rajesh and I've been associated with RPS since 2007 and I do trainings on semantic and Oracle products. Okay, so here today we'll be discussing about the terminologies in VCS and Veritas cluster. Okay, so let us discuss what is a cluster. A cluster is a collection of systems used for high availability purpose for business continuity. Okay? So even if your service goes down on one of the machines, it should be highly available. So what are the setup? What is the setup required for that? That is what we'll be discussing in here. <clears throat> a cluster can consist of up to sixty-four nodes. You can have up to sixty-four nodes in your cluster. Uh, interconnect is required for cluster communication. So for your heartbeat and your configuration syncing. A cluster interconnect is required, which is also called as a private network. A public network for client communications, okay, the, for the client to access your service, which is running on the cluster nodes, and a shared storage, okay, on which you'll be keeping <clears throat> all your application data, so that even if one machine goes down, your service can fail over to the other machine and it can access the application data from the other machine. Okay, so it has to be coming from a common storage. So that is what a cluster is a group of nodes which is connected to a shared storage which has got some kind of communication channel between them okay that's what a cluster is <clears throat> next is about a service group service group is basically a container which you know which will have all the resources associated inside that which is used to provide some service so that could be a hardware component or it could be a software component the collection of all the resources required to provide the service that is what a service group would be, right? <clears throat> so there are three things that you got to know here. One is the resource, another is dependencies and attributes. So resource, these are the components which makes up a service group. Okay, why we are having a service group is for, <clears throat> you know, moving from one machine to another machine. So it has to move as a container. If a service fails on one machine for some reason, let it be, let's say your storage is disconnected, just moving the storage resource to other machine will not make <clears throat> not sense. So you should, you should have all the services moving along with that. That includes your IP, that includes your data part, everything. The application itself should move over onto the other machine along with everything. This is why we have something called as a service group. <clears throat> then we got dependencies, dependencies on the service. If a resource is coming up, whatever dependencies are there, that should be up prior to that resource coming up. So we have to define the dependencies so that VCS knows what is the starting sequence and stopping sequence. And finally, the attributes. Okay, so if you have a three node cluster, on which system should your service group come up when you power on the cluster, on which system your service group should come up, a machine goes down to which machine your service group should fail over. These things are defined by your service group attributes. Then we'll discuss about different types of service groups. You got a failover service group and a parallel service group. Failover service group means at any point in time, your service group would be running only on one machine. Okay, it's called as active passive. If a machine goes down, then your entire service group fails over onto another machine. That includes all your resources along with that. So it moves on to another machine. This is called as an active passive service group. When you create a service group in VCS, the default is an active passive service group. Okay? So the next category is a parallel service group. That means your service group would be running on more than one machine at any point in time. Okay? This is what a parallel service group is. It's also called as active active. You'll have the same service running on multiple machines. This offers you, you know, load balancing features. So the processing can be done by multiple machines parallelly. Okay, this is what your parallel service group is. <clears throat> Next is about resources. So resource is any component that is used in cluster to provide the service. It could be a hardware component or it could be a software component. So examples would be, you know, your NIC, your IP, okay, mount, disk group, all these things are different examples. Your application itself is a resource. Okay. Now there are certain things that you need to consider while adding a resource into cluster. One is about the name, okay, what name you're going to give for that. The name has to be unique in your entire cluster. You cannot have two resources with the same in your cluster. Okay, so preferably when you're adding a resource into a cluster, check what is, a, what is the type of the resource. Okay, by looking at the name of the resource, you should be able to make out what kind of a resource it is. Okay, 
and with services using that resource so rather than calling the resource as you know just res1 or res2 it's better to name it properly so that you make out what kind of a resource it is so an example would be ora dg or ora nic or ora ip so that you know you can make out what kind of a resource it is and if at all you're having multiple instances of the same resource then you can even give some instance numbers like ora mnt1 ora mnt2 like that Okay, so this this would be very important while creating a resource give a proper name so that troubleshooting and management would be easy and uh, this resources would yes it would be part of a service group so without creating a service group you cannot create resources in vcs okay and there are two categories of resources one it's called as a persistent resource another it is called as a non-persistent resource okay so vcs to manage a resource in vcs it has to be a non-persistent resource. Non-persistent resource means any resource which can be made online or offline. So this is what will be controlled by VCS. Now there are certain resources which cannot be controlled by VCS, which should be controlled directly by your operating system. The best example for that would be an IC. VCS is not supposed to bring down the NIC when VCS takes the service from one machine to another machine. The NIC should be still up and running. Okay. Before VCS tries to assign an IP on an interface, the interface has to be up. So that means that has to be controlled by somebody other than VCS. That will be controlled by your operating system. So any resources that is managed by your operating system is called as a persistent resource. And anything that is managed by VCS is called as a non-persistent resource, which can be made online or offline. Okay. Persistent resource, the main thing is you cannot make such a resource offline. There are certain persistent resources which can be made online by VCS, but it cannot be made offline. Okay. Whereas non-persistent means VCS can make it online as well as offline. Next, we do have something about resource dependencies. Okay, why we are setting resource dependencies? If you're just adding resources into cluster, if you just add, you know, let's say you add 10 resources into cluster. VCS wouldn't know what is what kind of dependencies we have between those resources. What should be the sequence in which it should be started and stopped. So if you add 10 resources uh, which contains you know your disk group, mount, volume, all those things, VCS will, will try to start everything together. Okay. So if you have to say that this group has to first be imported and then your volume should be started and then your file system should be mounted, you have to define the dependencies. In VCS, the dependencies are defined as parent dependent on child okay so that means the first resource that has to be started should be the child resource and then only the parent resource can come up so setting dependencies would be mandatory if not while failing over or while switching over the service group vcs would try to stop and start everything together which will not happen unless and until your application is stopped you cannot unmount the file system unless and until your file system is unmounted you cannot stop your volume or deport the dg Okay. So for that, a specific sequence has to be maintained. This is what is being done by setting resource dependencies. <clears throat> so here your parent depends on child and it says it cannot be cyclical. You cannot have a loop. If you have three resources, let's say A, B and C, A depends on B, then B depends on C, that's fine. But again, if you say the third resource C depends on A, it becomes a loop. VCS wouldn't know what to start first and what to stop first. Okay, so cyclical dependencies are not allowed. You need to have a clearly defined parent and a clearly defined child. This would be mandatory. One more, one more point is your persistent resources. Persistent resources cannot be a parent. The reason is when you're bringing down the resources, you bring down the parent first and then the child. But if it is a persistent resource, it cannot be brought offline by VCS. So that means it cannot be acting as your parent resource you should not have persistent resource depending on anything that should be the child resource always so when you whenever you're adding a persistent resource the only option supported that for a persistent resource is as a child resource you cannot have a persistent resource depending on anything okay next is about resource types resource type would be classification classification of resources okay so if you're having multiple ip resources you may have multiple resources, but the type would be exactly the same thing because all these resources behaves in the same way. Similarly, when you're having multiple disk groups or multiple file systems, all these things, it's actually a single resource type. So resource type is nothing but a template which defines how a resource works in VCS. 
it really doesn't matter what name you give for the resource basically what type defines how vcs will manage that if you give a name as aura ip it's not mandatory that vcs would you know work on it as if it is an ip resource you have to define the type as well as the ip resource type only then vcs would know what are the attributes to that okay so resource type is just a template which tells you how vcs is supposed to manage a resource next is about agents okay so what we've discussed is what is a cluster what's a service group what is a resource what's the resource type and the final one in the terminologies would be what is an agent a uh, agent is like a device driver okay which is used to manage your resource type uh, if if you want a vcs to manage your ip resource vcs has to know that when ip is brought online what is the adapter name what is a net mask all those things vcs has to know similarly if vcs has to mount a file system it has to know what is a mount point what has to be mounted on that okay what is a file system type all these things has to be defined so your agent basically tells vcs about how to manage a resource type managing a resource type would mean how to make it online how to make it offline and how to monitor it okay so it, to do any of these tasks on a resource type you require something called as an agent so most of the agents around 50 resource types are there uh, by default so most of these agents would get installed at the time of vcs installation itself if you want any other custom resource type to be added into cluster you got to install the agent first and then add those resource types and then import those resource types into cluster that is the only way you can make vcs understand about how to manage those resources okay so, yeah, so that was about the terminologies in vcs thanks